there's all these things that have been done to make media that fits a particular format that that is kind of artificial. Broadcast television or theatrical release in a movie theater. It feels to me and to Zay and to our team, it feels like there's there, there are a lot of possibilities to experiment with formats. You have this massive new opportunity of low cost tools of production, right? So everybody can afford cameras and, and then also on the distribution side, the cost can go down to zero. And there's all these new mechanics by which people explore content and are delivered content. And the question for me starting this studio was, how can you try uh, and align the model of making things and showing them to people uh, with these new opportunities. Hollywood doesn't have an R&D model. The closest they have to it is what they call development. To be able to have an economic base for experimentation that pays for itself, at the same time that is also an incubator to try other stuff, I think that's really unique to BuzzFeed and a lot of the other opportunities online. It's not just re-engineering and reinventing what content is, it's re-engineering and reinventing the business process. Tens of thousands of people come to this town every year, and they have been for you know a long time. And they come here because they're interested in getting better at their creative life, making things. And one of the shifts that has happened recently is that the folks that are coming here are YouTube stars, or they have big Vine accounts, or they're, you know, they have their blogs, or they're big on Tumblr, or they've done like all these different things, and they're used to a certain kind of mode of production and a certain kind of relationship to their audience, which is you make something, you put it up, some things do better than others. You can see it all happen. And you see the entertainment industry try to figure out how to absorb these people into traditional models. Our notion of a producer is, you know, you make teams of, the, of people that can do all these different things. Instead of pitching up, they pitch to each other about kind of experiments that they're thinking about or what aspect of the media that they're interested in at that moment. They have to convince each other that it's worthwhile and then they make stuff and they make a lot. They can put something on YouTube, they can put something on Snapchat, they can put something on, on Facebook, and then immediately they can see, oh, was my brilliant idea actually something that connects with an audience? In the most abstract way, we're interested in how left brain data comes in contact with right brain creativity. How, how does that work? Short form gives you an opportunity to iterate in a very, very fast way. What it allows us to do is very quickly follow up on successes and test the assumptions that we make about why something works or doesn't work. Normally R&D is something that's off in a lab and then maybe it makes it into the world later. Our R&D is immediately in the world. There's no downside if it doesn't work. And the stuff that's really good, okay, we'll do more. We'll do more and more. And then if that works out, we'll upstream it to movies and TV. We're not trying to replace Hollywood, we're basically trying to supplement Hollywood and complement the system. Our view is that people are still gonna to wanna to be entertained, they're still gonna to wanna to be inspired, they're still gonna to wanna to be informed, and just because technological shifts are happening that, that change the way people consume media, doesn't mean all the things that have mattered in the history of media aren't going to continue to matter. We just need to figure out how to do that for the way that, that the media works today.